today um, I would like to share with you about, to speak with you about um, the strong heart of Caleb, this character from Scripture who we know, if we've read the story of Joshua and Caleb, the two faithful spies who came back um, from spying out the land. But Caleb, God said of Caleb, it's interesting because he only speaks about Caleb and he says, even though Caleb and Joshua both um, took a stand for what was right, he said, Caleb has a different spirit. And I want to show you a scene from Scripture where Caleb is now an old man. And uh, this is 45 years, as we're going to see, 45 years after the time that he went and spied out the land and came back with Joshua. And I want you to see if you can detect a change in this guy in any way, if he's come away from, sort of fallen back from where he was as a young man, or if, or if you know, the work that God was doing in his heart then is still evident. So I just want you to look at this with me in Joshua 14, verse 6. It says, Then the sons of Judah, of which Caleb was a member of that tribe, drew near to Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnea. I was 40 years old, when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. In other words, as I understood it, as I saw it, I said it exactly. I spoke from the heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt with fear. But I followed the Lord my God fully. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot has trodden will be an inheritance to you and to your children forever, because you have followed the Lord my God fully. Now behold, Caleb says, the Lord has let me live just as he spoke these 45 years. From the time the Lord spoke this word to Moses when Israel walked in the wilderness, and now, behold, I am 85 years old today. So he's getting, to, he's getting up there in years. I am still, is what he says, I am still as strong today as I was in the day Moses sent me. As my strength was then, so my strength is now for war and for going out and for coming in. So this guy is intense, right? Now then, give me this hill country about which the Lord spoke on that day. For you heard on that day that Anakim were there. These were giants with great fortified cities. Perhaps the Lord will be with me, and I will drive them out as the Lord has spoken. So in verse 13, Joshua blessed him and gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. Therefore, Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, until this day, because he followed the Lord God of Israel fully. Now the name of Hebron was formerly Kiriath Arba, which means city of Arba. For Arba was the great man, the greatest man among the Anakim. And it says after that, then the land had rest from war. So he names his city, the city Hebron, and he takes the name away, which was Kiriath Arba, the city of Arba. And Hebron actually means communion. So what this tells us is that he took away this ex exalting of some man as the title of the city. And he could have called it Kiriath Caleb. He could have named it after himself. But instead, he named it communion, which tells you very much where he drew his strength from, that he drew it from communion with God. <clears throat> now in verse uh, jo Joshua 15, verse 13, it says, Now he gave to Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, a portion am among the sons of Judah, according to the command of the Lord to Joshua, namely, Kiriath Arba, Arba being the father of Anak, that's Hebron. Verse 14, Caleb drove out from there the three sons of Anak, Shishai and Ahiman and Talmai, the children of Anak. So he drove out these giants from the city and from the land. And in Joshua 14, 15, it says, Now, the name of Hebron, as we saw this, but it was formerly Kiriath Arba, for Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim, and then the land had rest from war. So it, it wasn't, so Joshua came to, to, I'm sorry, Caleb came to Joshua and said, when I was a young man, younger, 
I went out and I had a faithful heart toward God and I walked in this land and I saw this city called, called this city that I really liked. And God said, the place where you put your feet will be yours. And he said, I'm no less strong now than I was then. In fact, I'm ready to go to war. I can go out. I can come back. I can do the whole thing. And so I'm just saying all I want is the thing that God promised. And, and so Joshua said, all right, it's yours. But just like God said to the nation of Israel, the land is yours. Now rise up and possess it. And Caleb went out with this strong heart of faith that he had. And he went into that city, drove out the giants, and took the place and named it Hebron, which, as I said, means communion. So there are times in life when the only pathway to peace, when the land, again, has rest from war, there are times when the only pathway to peace is to fight a great war. We would like for peace to be simple, right? Like, I just want... I, you know, I just wanted, I just want everything to be peaceful. I want the birds to sing and I want the sun to shine and I just want everything peaceful. But many times God says we have to fight a great war if we want there to be peace on the other side of it. Our, we have to, in our faith, we have to rise up and possess it. But the wars of the Lord, this is what I'm speaking of here, the wars of the Lord are the battles that he calls us into and the battles that we fight in his name. Because if God calls you into it and you fight it in his name, then the victory belongs to the Lord and he helps you to fight and to be victorious. <clears throat> and in this land, there were giants, huge, fierce men of stature and power. But Caleb had seen them before, 45 years earlier. As we see in Numbers 13, it says they returned from spying out the land and they had seen all of this. They, they told about the fruit, all of these things. You can see all of this in Numbers 13, 25 through 30. <clears throat> And the people said in a very negative way, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to work. We can't do it because of these giants in the land. But in verse 30, it says, Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, we should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome it. Forty-five years go by, and what is the same message that's resonating in the heart of Caleb? We should go up. We should take it. And we will take possession of it. We will surely overcome it. Nothing had changed in his heart. And that is one of the signs of faith abiding in the heart and the heart abiding in faith. That there's this unchanging, unshakable confidence in God who never changes. And if God spoke it, it's just as true today. 45 years later than when I heard it spoken the first time, it's just as true today. And my confidence is just as firm. Nothing changes because God does not change and his word is good. His word is sure. So let's stand firm with a strong heart as Caleb did, never more sure of God and never doubting him. And that's a challenge that I want to put to you. So if you're standing in faith, stand firm in your faith and let this man's life be an example to you of what God can do in your heart when you trust in him with a different spirit. And it's okay. In fact, it's good for you to have a different spirit in the world we live in today. So be blessed. May the Lord be with you.